Finding a pair of quality headphones that don't break the bank and stand out in a sea of other Bluetooth headphones can be hard to find. The JBL Vibe Beam promises a lot for a reasonable price, but can it deliver? I'm Arnell, and I'd love to tell you more, so let's talk tech. So before we get into the pros and cons, I wanted to give you some important features about the JBL Vibe Beam. So these Bluetooth earbuds retail for about $50. They feature JBL's deep bass sound, which is basically just the name of their sound profile. They have smart ambient, and probably my favorite feature overall is the long battery life for budget earbuds at a total of 32 hours. So getting into the things that I like about the JBL Vibe Beam. These have great audio. Now, we've said it time and time again in our other earbud reviews on this channel, but Adrian and I are not audiophiles, so we're not going to study how the treble affects the deep bass and all that kind of stuff that audiophiles look at. Uh, that's just not our realm of expertise. But what I can say is, as somebody that listens to a lot of music, listens to a lot of audiobooks, listens to a lot of podcasts with earbuds, I can say that these do a great job of giving good, deep, realistic sound that doesn't sound too fake or exaggerated. I can hear the trebles, the mids, the lows, everything just fine, and the bass isn't too overwhelming. So these do a good job of having a nice, balanced sound profile. Speaking of that sound profile, there's actually a customizable equalizer in the JBL headphones app. This does a great job of allowing you to customize all the different features and different sound profiles that you want, and you can choose from different presets that are already available in the app. These are very comfortable in the ear in very specific circumstances. I'll get into some areas where these are not comfortable a little bit later in the cons portion of the review, but for areas where this does feel very comfortable in the ear is when I'm just sitting up and listening to music or I'm walking around and sitting at the desk, whatever is the case, and they're also very lightweight. These just kind of vanish and I don't really feel anything in my ear. So these are very good in that aspect. These also have a nice sleek design. Now I really like the black headphones here, mainly because I am a main AirPods Pro user. So uh, as somebody that is only rocking that, I am liking the black sleek design of this and the case also just looks very nice. It looks a little bit higher quality than what it is. These also look great in the ear as well. They don't stick out or jut out too far, at least when you're visibly looking at them. And uh, I do like the black look of the earbuds themselves and also sort of the piano black mirror um, effect on the actual front side of the earbuds themselves. It looks very underrated and that is a nice touch with that piano black that I personally really enjoy. Now, while these don't feature wireless charging, that's not too big of a deal for these earbuds because they do have great long battery life. So I am not going to fault them for not having wireless charging. But when you do need to charge it, you do have USB type C charging, which is pretty much the default industry standard for charging devices at this point. So the USB type C does a great job of charging these at a relatively fast rate. And the fact that it's type C and not micro USB or anything else is great. Speaking of that long battery life, as I said earlier, you do have a total of 32 hours of battery life in these earbuds. You get eight hours in the buds themselves, and you get an additional 24 hours in the case. So you're honestly good for a good while. And so for somebody that is like me, where I'm listening to audiobook and listening to podcasts and stuff like that throughout my day, I'm usually able to get a good solid two to three days worth of usage. There's not too often that I actually need to plug these in to charge. Moving on to the last pro, that's sort of a con, but I'll give it more of a pro, uh, and it's the microphones. So these have decent passable microphones. They're certainly not bad, but they're not going to, you know, really wow you or give really good, high quality, clear uh, sound. And so because of that, I'm gonna kind of give it a little bit of a passable grade because you can at least tell what somebody's trying to say. And while these do a great job of allowing you to listen to things very good and very clear, the microphones, while they're not perfect, they do just enough to get you by, especially at this price point. So I honestly can't complain with that. This is the JBL Vibe Beam recording of the microphones. This is what the microphones sound like. They're okay, they're not the worst, they're not the best. Uh, you can hear me in a quiet room with the microphones picking up the noise. They're okay, they're decent for 50 bucks, they're okay. 
Now, before we move on to the cons, I do want to remind you that if you're finding value in this video, well, make sure to subscribe because you don't want to miss another review like this. Here at Arnently Tech, we believe that tech was made to make our life easier. So we're here to help you understand and discover that tech that was made to improve your life. Now, right up here, I will have linked a playlist of all of our earbud reviews that you might want to check out for yourself because I'm going to be getting into some cons here. And after listening to these, you might not want to pick up the JBL Vibe Beam. So moving into the first con, it seems to be a trend with a lot of the JBL cases, but honestly, the case is pretty slippery. I mean, you've seen it time and time again in the past in some of Adrian's reviews. This case is just not the best. Now, it's not the slipperiest case in the world. I will give it that. Uh, these are a little bit less slippier than like the Beats Studio Buds, which I reviewed a little while ago, but these are still not the best. And while they fit into the pocket very easily and they're very sleek in that sense, they're not gonna be bulging and jetting out of your pocket or anything like that. Once you actually do pull them out of your pocket, you gotta have a firm grip on the case because, well, they just might slip out of your hands. Speaking of the case, I've had these earbuds for a little over a week now, and this case is really prone to scratches and any kind of smudge from oily fingers or anything like that. It's crazy how quickly it just deteriorates the case, and I'm honestly a little bit afraid to see what these will look like in a year. The earbuds themselves look fine and great, but it's just that case that just looks completely worn out after only a week. And the last thing on the case is that, well, the case is just kind of awkwardly designed. So visually, when you open up the case, the earbuds look kind of cool, how they're just situated in the case and the direction they're facing and stuff like that. That looks perfectly fine. But what I dislike about the earbuds is just sort of the angle that you have to get them. And as somebody that doesn't have gigantic hands, I struggle trying to get these earbuds out. It's just a little bit awkward and uncomfortable pulling these out because it's almost like I need like a pair of tweezers or something like that to be able to properly pull these out of the case without actually hitting the top of the case or, you know, potentially scratching anything like that. And so it's just kind of awkward and uncomfortable and just almost makes you feel like you're doing something wrong just trying to take the earbuds out of the case. Now, another thing I really don't like are the touch controls. The touch controls are very unreliable and extremely inconsistent. It's pretty crazy how the touch controls uh, are specifically with the volume controls are just how they're laid out. So basically you will do one tap on the touch control and that will raise the volume. And you would think, okay, maybe if I raise the volume on the right earbud, maybe I can lower the volume by doing that on the left earbud, or maybe I can slide my finger up and down to raise and lower the volume. No, you would tap it once to raise the volume and you would double tap again to lower the volume. And again, on paper, that doesn't seem very weird, However, the problem comes into play when you're wearing the earbuds and you're actually using these touch controls. For one, I'm not a fan of you having to actually press something into your ear. I've talked about this before in other earbud reviews, but these being touch controls, you would think that you don't necessarily have to jam them into your ear by actually hitting a physical button. But the problem is that when you're trying to lower the volume, you inadvertently might not tap it fast enough. And so you might end up raising the volume even more, uh, or it might not even register what you're trying to do and might think that you're trying to do a long press and activate Siri or other smart assistance in your phone. And so it just does a pretty bad job of accurately doing what you want it to do when you needed to do it. Now, while these are also in your ear, another thing I really don't like is just how uncomfortable these are, specifically when you're laying down. So earlier I said that these are very comfortable when you're walking around, you're sitting up, you're standing up, you're doing stuff. But the moment that you're laying down, maybe you're wanting to listen to some white noise as you take a nap or something like that. Or maybe you're like me and you fall asleep to YouTube videos and wake up in the middle of the night realizing that you forgot to turn off the video and you're now somehow three hours into a Sam Friedman video. I don't know how this same video keeps popping up at 3 a.m. and I always wake up to it, but alas, what ends up happening is whenever you're laying down with the earbuds in your ears, they're just very, I don't know, they're just very uncomfortable and they stick out just enough to put a weird pressure on the inside of your ear that just is really irritating. And so if you're somebody that doesn't lay down with earbuds or whatever's the case, this con might not be an issue for you, but as somebody that might fall asleep listening to these, or maybe like I said, you're setting yourself up to listen to some white noise, taking a nap or whatever's the case, you're eventually going to have this weird pressure on your ear when you're laying down. 
And so with all of these cons and the pros I mentioned earlier, I wanna give a final rating of about 7.5 out of 10. So these are not the worst earbuds that I have ever seen or used, but these are certainly far from the best. And uh, there's a lot of things that they could improve on in some ways. There are some things that are minor that could easily be fixed in software and some things in the hardware that just need a complete overhaul, like with the case and the design of the earbuds themselves. But all of that said, these are not the worst earbuds. And if you're looking at picking up affordable earbuds, but not wanting to break the bank, wanting to get something that at least does the job and does the job fairly well as well, you're not gonna be disappointed in these, but if you're wanting to get something that sticks out in the crowd of other earbuds that are around this price point, well, you might wanna look somewhere else. At least that's my take on it. But maybe you wanna check out some of our other earbud reviews. Well, definitely check out this review that Adrian did on the JBL Tune 230. These are honestly the better value for a still relatively affordable price. Or you can check out my review of the Beat Studio Buds in the AirPods Pro in this video right here. I'll catch you in those videos. Peace.